everybody. How nice to see you again. Welcome to Kids Church for another Sunday. Hope it's been a good week. Still a little bit strange in lockdown, isn't it? I hope you've been keeping well, whether you're at school doing um, your work or whether you're at home on online learning. Now, do you remember last week we started a new series all about children in the Bible? Now, we're going to be looking at another child in the Bible this week. Last week we did Samuel. This week it's going to be a child whose heart was right before God and they became a king. I wonder if you can work out who it might be. The person we're going to be talking about first is David. Now, I wonder what you know about David. Mm, did you know his name means beloved? Mm. Names often mean something. I wonder if you know what your name means. He was the youngest in his family. And sometimes if you're the youngest, you might feel the least important. I'm actually the youngest in my family. But of course, it doesn't really mean that, does it? You, uh, It doesn't mean that you're less important if you're the youngest, but sometimes you can feel it if you're smaller or if you're um, not as old, uh, if your older brothers and sisters can do things a bit better. But God had said of David that he was a young man after God's own heart. Because we know it's what's inside that matters. Now David was a shepherd. He played the harp. He protected his sheep. But he still might have felt not very important. But it depends what you want done, doesn't it? Now... If I had the choice between two presents, a really big posh one or a little one that is not quite so bright, which would you choose? Well, I might choose the big one because I might think that one looks a bit boring. But really, it depends what's on the inside, doesn't it? Now, if I tell you, really what I'd like to do is some colouring. So I'd really like some lovely crayons because that's what I'd like to do. I really need to know if what's inside here is going to help me with my colouring. Oh, it looks like a really lovely present. I'm really hoping that, oh, that's not very good, is it? It's not going to help me because there's nothing inside it. I wonder what's inside this one. Let's have a look. It's a little bit brown and boring, isn't it, on the outside? But I wonder if it's got what I need on the inside. <gasps> it's got all sorts of wonderful colours to crayon with. Now, if what, what I want to do is do some wonderful colouring, that's the one I'm going to need, isn't it? The small one in the brown paper, not the posh one in the lovely paper because we know it's what's inside that matters. So our story today is going to be thinking what's inside it's not about how big you are or how important you are. Let's see. Hello everybody. Hello everyone. How are you all? Yeah, we hope you're doing okay don't we? Yeah. We have a David fact file quiz for you. You see, we reckon you probably know quite a bit about David. He's one of the well-known characters in Bible stories and we want to find out what you know. So we have eight questions. Every question has three possible answers and you can choose which one you think is right. And then we'll give you the answers and Liz is going to use a highlighter pen uh, to help us work out the actual facts about David. Let's give it a go. And if you were listening to Jenny's introduction, she has given you some really important information. So I hope you are concentrating. Here we go. David fact file quiz. What do you know about David? Where was David born? Jerusalem? Bethlehem or Norwich? 
What was David's family like? Was David an only child? Did he have lots of sisters or lots of brothers? And a bonus point, if you know what David's dad was called. Question three, was David the youngest, the oldest, or did he come somewhere in the middle of the family? I wonder what you think. What instrument did David play? Drums, piano, or harp? Question five. What was David's job? Was he a shepherd, a soldier, or a king? What was the name of the giant that David killed? Frankenstein, Batman, or Goliath? Question seven. Did David get married? No. Yes, he had one wife. He had several wives. And the last question, how long was David king for? Four years, 40 years, or 14 years? I wonder what answers you came up with. Let's find the answers now and Liz is going to help us. So here are the answers to our David Fact File quiz. Where was David born? Jerusalem, Bethlehem or Norwich? Lizzie, what do you think? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Give yourself one point if you got Bethlehem. Number two, what was David's family like? David was an only child, had lots of sisters or lots of brothers. What answer did you choose? Well, he had... Lots of brothers. Lots of brothers. Seven, in fact. Now, we offered a bonus point if you knew what David's father was called. So, anybody know? Lizzie, would you write up the name of David's father for us? Yes, his name was Jesse. Question three. Was David the youngest, the oldest, or in the middle of the family? What did you choose? He was... The youngest. The youngest. Number four, what instrument did David play? Drums, piano or harp? Jenny told us this one if you were listening. He played... The harp. The harp. Number five, what was David's job? Shepherd, soldier or king? Now, this one's a bit tricky. If you said shepherd, you were right. If you said soldier, you were right. And if you said king, you were right. But he wasn't all of them all at the same time. So which job did he have first of all? Lizzie, would you write number one by the right answer for us? And then he became a soldier. So he was a shepherd first, and then he became a soldier. And last of all, he became a king. I hope everybody knows the answer to number six. What was the name of the giant that David killed? Frankenstein, Batman or Goliath? And it was... Goliath. Well done if you got that one right. Now two questions you might not know the answer to, but we'll see. Did David get married? No. Yes, he had one wife 
or yes he had several wives and the answer is C he had several wives And then our last question. How long was David king for? Four years, 40 years, or 14 years? And the answer, Lizzie, is? 40. 40 years. So there you have it. David was born in Bethlehem. He had lots of brothers and his father was called Jesse. David was the youngest and he played the harp. First of all, he was a shepherd, but then he became a soldier and then the king. He killed a giant named Goliath. He got married and yes, he had several wives and he was king for 40 years. Well done if you got all of those right. Jenny is now going to tell us part of David's story. So our story is called A New King. I hope you like my crown. God's people wanted a king. But Samuel said, but God is your king. But the people just kept saying, we want a king, we want a king. God knew that he could look after the people the best. But God's people were really determined. They wanted to be like everyone else and have a king. So in the end, God said, OK, I'll give you a king. Now, the new king was King Saul. He started well, but oh dear, he didn't listen to God. Do you remember the story last week where we were listening and thinking how Samuel listened to God? Saul didn't listen to God or obey him. What was inside Saul was not very good. Oh dear, God needed someone to help him with his plans. And God thought, I know just the person. And he told Samuel to go on a journey to Bethlehem. Now Samuel was a prophet and he listened really well to God. He went to a man called Jesse who had a really big family. He had seven really strong sons. And if you wanted a king, I wonder what you'd choose. Well, in those days, people wanted somebody who was going to be really strong and powerful, maybe handsome, rich, brave, important. So when Jesse went and looked at each of the sons, when Samuel went and looked at each of the sons, when the first son came, he was really big and strong. But Samuel said, no, that's not the one. When the second son came, he said, mm, no, that's not the one. The third son came, he was not quite as tall. Is that the one? No, that's not the one. The fourth son came, is that the one? No, that's not the one. The fifth son came, he was quite a bit smaller, but still quite strong. Is this the one? No. The sixth son came. Is this the one? No. And the seventh one came. He was still quite a bit smaller, but still strong. Is this the one? It must be him. No. Oh dear. Samuel was getting really disappointed. Have you not got any more sons, Jesse? Oh, well, Jesse laughed. Well, there is just one more, but he's the youngest. He's really small and young. I don't think you'll want him. Oh, yes, Samuel said. Will you send for him? So one of his brothers went to fetch him in from the fields where he was looking after the sheep. 
And when he came, yes, he was small, but his heart was right before God. And do you remember we talked before about what's being inside is what matters. And God said to Samuel, yes, this is the one. He is somebody who has a heart like mine. And Samuel said to Jesse, yes, this is the one. Yes, the youngest, the smallest. He's the one. Because God looks at the heart. And Jesse said, okay. And Samuel anointed David with oil, because that's what they did in those days. He anointed him with oil to show that David was going to become a king one day, a really important king, because David's heart was right before God. Play it, boys. I wonder if you've ever done a timeline. It gives you a chance to look at somebody's life and put in all the important things that happened to them. We're going to do a timeline for David. We actually know quite a lot about David from the Bible. So we can put together quite a lot of information about him. First of all, we know he was a shepherd. And he looked after sheep when he was young. Let's have some sheep in there. But we also know that while he was young, he started to love and follow God. And Jenny told us the story about how he had a heart for God. God knew what he was like on the inside. We also know that when he was young, he learnt to play the harp. And in the Bible, we have a book called The Psalms. And lots of David's songs are in the Psalms. So we don't just know about what he did, but we also know about what he felt. Because in his songs, he tells us what he's found out about God. He talks about the happy times, the sad times, the difficult times, and how all the time he knew that God was with him, helping him. Now, something very, very important happened. Probably the most famous story of David 
happened while he was still a shepherd. If I put five little stones down there, that reminds us of the time when David, as a shepherd boy, went to find his brothers who were in Saul's army and they were facing a big threat. Goliath, a nine foot high soldier, kept sending out this threat. Come and fight me, one of you come and fight me. And if you can win, we'll all belong to you and serve you. And if I win, then you'll all be our servants. Well, David, trusting God, knowing how big God was, offered to go and fight Goliath. And he did. He didn't take armour. He took five little stones and his shepherd's sling. And God gave him an amazing victory. So that was a really important point in David's life. And that changed what he did. He stopped being a shepherd and he started being a soldier. He began to work for King Saul. Let's put some armour in here. We've got a shield, a helmet and a sword. Now David was a very good soldier. In fact he was so good he ended up leading Saul's army and he had lots of victories against Israel's enemies. The only trouble was King Saul got jealous. Do you remember Jenny told us that King Saul had stopped listening to God? Well, he started being very jealous of David, so much so that he tried to kill David and David had to escape. And for a while, for several years, David was hiding in caves and woods, constantly on the move because Saul kept trying to find him to kill him. So parts of David's life were really, really tough. But he knew that God was with him. In the next part of David's story, after King Saul died, David became king. And he moved the capital city to Jerusalem and he bought God's special Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem and encouraged everybody to worship and love and serve God. Now, was David always a good king? He was a pretty good king, but he didn't always get things right. He wasn't a very good dad, and so he had lots of problems in his family, and he made some really bad choices. He let God down badly, and yet when he asked God to forgive him, he knew that God had forgiven him. Here's the timeline then for some of the events in David's life. What was really important was that David knew that God had a plan for him. He said in one of his songs, we find it in Psalm 37, the Lord directs the steps of those who love him. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. David knew that God had a plan for his life and God has a plan for our lives too, for you and for me. I wonder where you are on your timeline. I've done quite a lot of different things in my life I could draw up quite a big timeline, but some of us are a lot younger. Some of you have only just started life and ahead of you there will be big decisions to make, big choices, but God has a plan for your life and he will help you. Here's our memory verse for today. It's some of David's good advice that we find in Psalm 37. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him 
and he will help you. Psalm 37 verse 5. Commit? What does that mean? Well, it means give everything we do to the Lord. Invite him to be part of every part of our lives. If we do that and we trust him, we know that he will help us. So let's say it together. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Psalm 37 verse 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Psalm 37 verse 5. Steve's going to pray for us now. And then we're going to finish with a song that reminds us, just as David reminds us, that God is a great big God. He is so powerful and yet he holds us in his hands. And he has a plan and he wants us to be part of his plan. His plan for our lives, his plan for his world. We'll see you soon. And next time we'll be looking at another child in the Bible. Surprise! Hi Kids Church, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've enjoyed the story this morning about David and reminded that uh, God loves us all and has plans for us all, yes. So I'm going to finish with the final prayer um, as we finish Kids Church this week. So here it goes. May the Lord bless you keep you safe and help you. May the Lord smile on you and be kind to you. May the Lord take care of you and give you his peace. Amen. Stay safe and stay close to Jesus. Our God is a great big God.